In Jurassic Park, we're introduced to a very sick Triceratops, and it's explained in movie. But what happens if I told you all the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park are sick, including all the carnivores? In fact, especially the carnivores. All of this is actually subtly hinted at in the movie as well, and I can't believe I never noticed it at first. But let's start at the very beginning, the Triceratops. We do know they say it's from ecological plant life, and happens once every six weeks. Ellie Sattler then goes through a big pile of you know what and tries to find the exact cause. Then later on we also see a Brachiosaurus which is presumably sick because it sneezes all over Lex and Tim. We get the explanation for the Triceratops but nothing for the Brachiosaurus and I haven't even gone to the carnivores yet. Now, in Jurassic Park, the novel, there's a major subplot slash bit of commentary where Hammond genetically engineers a miniature elephant. But due to its genetics being altered, it was actually prone to colds, especially during the winter. It would sneeze a lot, its trunk filled with sores, and generally was very weak. Hmm, does this all sound familiar? Especially as these dinosaurs were also genetically engineered. Hammond is clearly sparing the expense here. There are other subtle hints which point to this in the carnival as well. Let's start with the faithful Velociraptor scene in the kitchen and there are several things which point to them being sick. First off, when they actually come up to the door, the Velociraptor blows out its nostril and puts moisture all over the glass. Now one, that would never actually happen indoors unless it was extremely cold. Two, the force in which that Velociraptor clears its nostril sounds like it's blocked. Again, that there pointing towards an illness. And there's another indicator, when Timmy drops the spoon, the Velociraptor Velociraptor is basically on top of him and unable to smell him in that vicinity. Being an alpha predator, that Velociraptor would be able to track and smell him from miles away. Sure, we could say that some of the genetic process may have altered its ability to sense and smell animals, but not to that degree. When it's sat and sniffing right next to him, it doesn't even pick up a whiff that Tim is there. Again, giving that indication that these dinosaurs are in fact sick. Now, before we move on to the next part, we do also know that the dinosaurs did have their own faulty enzymes implanted in them and that was the lysine contingency and what that means is that the dinosaurs couldn't manufacture the amino acid lysine in their body and they had to be supplied by that by the park rangers but we do know that the herbivores find lysine in the plants and the carnivores then eat the herbivores and thus the cycle continues so the lysine wouldn't actually have anything to do with them being sick at this stage so that rules that out now let's also take a look at another bit of evidence when we see the T-Rex break out where Ian Malcolm and Alan Grant save the kids and there's one point where Alan Grant and Lex are up against the Ford Explorer and the T-Rex comes nose to nose with Alan Grant. Now the T-Rex being an absolute super predator should have an awesome sense of smell but in this situation it cannot even smell Grant right in front of her. Very similar to the raptor situation in the kitchen and again the T-Rex blows out its his nostril and is unable to locate the pay. Are you noticing a common theme yet? Hmm. So far, all dinosaurs are exhibiting some type of illness, maybe linked to their immune system, some type of flu. Now, one could also say that the rain, the thunderstorm, had a part to play in the T-Rex's ability to sniff out Alan Grant. But what about the raptors in the kitchen? I don't think there's any excuse for that. But the two predators definitely seemed like their nose was blocked, and obviously the Bracky was as well. Now, before we go any further, I will just point out one thing, although it's technically not canon. In the games of Jurassic World, Jurassic World Evolution, Jurassic Park, Operation Genesis, etc., you have to research immunities, booster jabs, all kind of things for your dinosaurs because they are extremely susceptible to getting ill. Now, that could be some foreshadowing there, but we have to take that with a pinch of salt because the games themselves are not canon to the movie universe. I will touch on a quick theory as well. The composition of the atmosphere was wildly different back in the Jurassic period with four times the atmospheric carbon dioxide and causing temperatures to be roughly 10 degrees higher across much of the earth. Now that might not sound much but it would have a huge impact on the dinosaurs in general especially the carbon dioxide count but I will throw that theory completely out the water because we have an ecosystem of dinosaurs on Isla Sauna which are not affected by the atmosphere at all so it cannot be the atmosphere in the present day but that is the movie universe in the book is completely different on Isla Sauna and in fact the dinosaurs on Isla Sauna are indeed all sick now you might be wondering is that connected to this just let me explain 
Now, obviously, we are following the movie law here, but we are taking some snippets from the book. So, for example, in the book, all the babies which were hatched were fed a certain type of food. Later on, this food turns out to give them some type of illness, which would later wipe out all the dinosaurs on Isla Sauna. But alas, that is not the case in the movie universe, and that's what we're following today. So on Isla Sauna, the dinosaurs are super healthy in the second movie, which would have nothing to do with the illness for the dinosaurs of the original Jurassic Park. So with that, we're now back at square one, but I do believe I have an answer to this question. The only dinosaur we see on screen which it doesn't appear to be sick is the Dilophosaurus. Now, could that be down to it being nothing like its real life counterpart and is actually very short, spits acid, has frills, and able to produce this poison venom? Does that somehow combat this type of virus we've seen in Jurassic Park? Or was it the fact that we didn't see enough screen time? Either way, the Dilophosaurus had no problem in sniffing out a Dennis Nedry in the wind, the rain, that peak of the thunderstorm, and able to hit him point blank in the face with its venom. So something about the Dilophosaurus may not be affected by that virus, but it's too hard to tell. The real dilemma we have is that Isla Sauna dinosaurs flourished, whereas the Jurassic Park dinosaurs seem extremely ill. The only concluding factor I can really find is the fact that it does, believe it or not, actually point to the lysine deficiency. John Arnold actually says that if they don't get the supplements, they'll fall into a coma and die. Symptoms of the lysine deficiency include fatigue, nausea, inhibited growth, sores, as well as a compromised immune system. Now, in real life, no animal can produce lysine. But let's just say, theoretically, they needed a megadose to survive. Given what we know about Hammond and his sparing no expense, actually being about cutting corners everywhere, it's very possible that the diners were already suffering from a deficiency even before the collapse. This then could have led them to suffer even more with them being susceptible to the common cold, which would later wipe out of all of Jurassic Park's dinosaurs anyway. It's very clear they were suffering from some type of illness related to that in my eyes. This would then fit with the overall plot and theme of the books and potentially could have been a subplot in the movie, but was cut. It fits with Michael Crichton's biological engineering storylines and Hammond trying to make dinosaurs, but in reality all he's doing is terrible gene splicing, creating Frankensteins and disguising them of dinosaurs just so he can get that profit and spare no expense. Anyway, that's how I believe all the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park are actually sick. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out all my other videos on the channel. There's plenty on there. I'm sure you enjoy them. I'm Shadows, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot, and bye-bye. Remember, spare no expense.